AI can do this. What is your contribution? AI can now write a systematic review in minutes, but you can spend years and still not get one accepted in decent journals. It's a bittersweet reality. What once took months and a team of authors AI can now do in a fraction of the time. But as review papers become easier to generate, editors are raising the defenses. I've already seen multiple desk rejections with the same reason. AI can do this. What is your contribution? This is the reality we are facing. The easier AI makes it to write a review, the harder it becomes to publish one. We are already seeing the side effects of excessive AI-generated manuscripts, disrupting the flow of publication system, and the bans on review article submissions on multiple frontiers. So when my team and I submitted our new review, we understood very quickly that a traditional review would not pass. So we built something AI cannot replicate. Today, I'll show you exactly how to do this step by step, but in a way that actually makes sense to researchers, not robots. Here's our recent article, Benefits and Impact of Technology-Enhanced Learning Applications in the Higher Education in the Middle East and North Africa, a Systematic Review, which was accepted in a remarkably short time with a minor revision and in our first attempt without a single desk rejection. So stay with me to the end of this video and I'll show you all the tricks we've used so we can follow our blueprint. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Prof. Samira Hosseini. I've guided over 12,000 ambitious academics go from struggling with Q1 journal publication, low visibility, and weak citation records to building strong research profiles, earning global recognition, and establishing themselves as trusted authorities in their field. Make sure you like this video and hit the subscribe button to be reminded whenever I post a new one. Let's get started. If you look closely at rejected review papers, one pattern appears over and over. They summarize, they describe, they compile, but they don't contribute. Editors are no longer impressed by clean text, smooth transitions, or prisma-looking flowcharts. They want intellectual labor. They want methodological depth. They want an analysis that AI cannot produce. So in our review, we took a different approach, one that integrates databases, diagnostic mapping, modeling, and conceptual linguistic into a single narrative. It's not easy? No, nope, it's not. I don't promise easy. I promise results. Let me take you through that system. Step one, real Prisma, multiple databases search. We began by doing something AI often pretends to do, but can't execute properly. A real Prisma guided research based on structured queries and inclusion rules. We ran a systematic search across multiple databases, extracted 307 studies from Scopus and Web of Science, ran automated and manual duplication tests, used Boolean operators and applied strict inclusion filters, and finalized a database of 85 eligible studies. AI cannot produce this structure because it neither accesses real databases nor applies methodological judgment. We have a complete training on these steps as part of the Autonomous Academic Accelerator, so Prisma is no longer a concern if you are part of the AAA community. Step two, cast quality and bias appraisal. Before synthesizing anything, we perform the CASP evaluation for methodological rigor, bias, sampling, and credibility. This step alone signals to the editors that your review is not AI-generated. It requires human interpretation, something no generative model reliably performs. Step three, heterogeneity testing in R. Next, we check whether the data could actually be synthesized using a number of statistical tests. This is what a real systematic review looks like, not just a textual summary. AI never performs this diagnostic, and editors know that. Step four, trend analysis across a decade. We mapped how publications evolved year by year. Unsurprisingly, the post-COVID period triggered a massive surge. Trend analysis reveals growth patterns, turning points, and research cycles. AI-generated reviews rarely include this because they don't access the real temporal data. Step five, geographical and sectoral mapping. We identified which Middle Eastern and North African countries led the technology-enhanced learning research. We also uncovered why, for instance, the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia with their national digital strategies surged to the top, why Jordan performed strongly, and why other countries remained underrepresented. This step transforms your review into something editors truly, really, genuinely value. This is regional intelligence, not just literature synthesis. Now you're talking like a serious thought leader. By the way, if you want the PDF to this article, drop the word PDF in the comments below, and I'll send it to you so you can see the details of our approach. 
Step six, thematic analysis of benefits, challenges, and outcomes. We identified recurring patterns such as digital divide, infrastructure limitation, pedagogical readiness, sociocultural and linguistic barriers, post-pandemic digital transformation, and so much more. We even went so far to propose our own model on how government, industry, and educators are interconnected in addressing the digital divide. This is where your review stops describing the studies and start interpreting them. I've seen that happening far more frequently than you believe. Review papers that don't go beyond mere summary or sentence to rejection. So much more now with AI doing a nearly perfect job at summarizing. Step seven, concept mapping with VOS Viewer. To uncover the intellectual structure of the field, we conducted co-occurrence mapping. VOS Viewer revealed clear clusters around online learning, digital divide, higher education, and COVID-19 adaptation. Oof, that's where things get pretty exciting. Concept maps show relationships AI cannot drive meaningfully. Editors love this. We have comprehensive training on VOS Viewer in the AAA modules, along with tutorials that walk you through the step-by-step -step process of generating these fascinating visuals. Step eight. Text mining on all abstracts. Using R, we analyze the linguistic composition of the field, top recurrent terms, latent thematic densities, hidden gaps, shift in terminology over time, and so much more. Now, let's get serious. This gives your review analytical weight AI cannot fake. And finally, step nine, sentiment and emotional balance analysis. Finally, we measured sentiment polarity across the literature. As part of the AAA, we have a training on sentiment analysis and some of our mentors are experts in this technique. In this paper, we found that the field is overwhelmingly optimistic and anticipatory, yet consistently concerned about the equity and teacher readiness. This perspective is rarely ever captured in traditional reviews and virtually never by AI. I mean, let's be honest, which journal can say no to this paper? A review AI cannot imitate. When you combine Prisma, CASP, statistical diagnostic, mapping, modeling, text mining, and sentiment analysis, you don't just summarize literature. You produce a multidimensional scientific contribution, something unmistakably human-driven, something editors cannot dismiss as AI-generated. And that's exactly how our review was accepted. What's next? If you want your review paper to survive editorial filters, you need to go beyond summarizing. You need analysis, rigor, and interpretive depth. Drop the word PDF in the comments and I'll send you the paper I showed in this video. I'm sure it will serve you as a great guide. And also watch this video to learn how to go about Prisma, choose the Boolean operator, design your inclusion and exclusion criteria, and shortlist the final outcome for your analysis. Publishing articles in top journals isn't easy, but it's not some kind of voodoo or secret magic reserved for a select few. It comes down to strategy and technique. And that's exactly what we focus on within AAA program. Book a call to chat and we'll see whether we are the right fit to work together. I've included the link in the video description and I look forward to meeting with you.